Well, as everybody knows, it's playoff time in both uh, hockey and in the NBA, and uh, they just about coincide for many years. You know, one was a couple of weeks before the other, but they're basically started at the same time this time around. And uh, the NBA may be, you know, a few days be ahead of the NHL. So nonetheless, they're still in the first round, and uh, we'll talk basketball today. The Jones brothers, Paul and Mark, will be uh, with us. Paul Jones, of course, the voice of the Raptors uh, somewhere around Toronto. <laughs> and uh, Mark, I hear you're in Sacramento. Yeah. You're still yeah. there. Starting to move and shake on the West Coast here. Um, being a sports fan on the West Coast is different, and I love it because you get all your games in in the early afternoon and evening, and you get to bed by ten o'clock. Because I'm a lightweight. Bob. Well, <laughs> you can oh, go to bed you, at ten o'clock. You <laughs> got to You got to You got it, Mark. You got to tell us what it was like to be a broadcaster for the first playoff victory in sixteen years. It's unbelievable, and I'm, I'm just now getting my hearing back. Um, being inside Golden One Center uh, pregame, the fans were going nuts, um, you know, an hour before tip-off. Big party outside in the playoff playground outside Golden One Center. Um, thousands of fans outside, sellout inside. Um, I had to take out one of my, I use a, a dual IFB system when we're on air. I had to take out one so that it didn't blow out both eardrums. I could hear Doris Burke beside me and um, throwing to commercial after our open. I, I I couldn't even hear my producers count to break. I mean, it was that loud. Something like I've never experienced before. It. And, you know, the game was outstanding. Uh, the fans, the fans here really deserve it. You know, they deserve it. They've gone through 16 and a half long lean years of, of being in the playoff wilderness and you know several coaching changes player roster turnover and they've got a fantastic group under an amazing coach soon to be the coach of the year mike brown so it all came together in one spectacular moment and just found out that that game on saturday was the highest rated basketball game of the year um on all networks wow yeah wow. great team man yeah well, the Sacramento fans have been known to be loud over the years, and they oh, haven't, boy. as you as you indicated, they haven't had a lot to be loud about a lot of nights. And to get a playoff game at this point, what it was pretty much expected that this this place would be rocking. Um, was it as loud uh, in game two? Yeah, it was nuts. It was just as loud. In fact, you know, guys, um, it has been almost this loud for the last two weeks of the regular season, once they clinched a playoff spot, um, the fans really started to show up uh, with their voices even more so. So they were loud at the end of the regular season and loudest in the first two playoff games. And, um, you know, game two uh, last night was uh, kind of, you could feel a little bit of exhale prior to the game. It wasn't kind of, uh, as, as boisterous as it was prior to game one, because after winning that first game, it was an opportunity to say, okay, we made it to the playoffs. We got the first win of the playoffs in 17 years. Right. Let's let go a little bit and really be present and enjoy being in the moment. And that's what last night felt like from a crowd standpoint, but uh, they were no less intense than they were in game one. Hey, hey Mark, I remember you telling me about, being close to the Silicon Valley and all the technology and early on you telling me about the beam and yeah. it's become a thing now. Like last night I watched the walk-off interviews and Malik Monk walked over and <laughs> I, I could hear the countdown and he hit the button and you know, the bat signal, the beam went up and people kind of laughed at that at the start, but now it's a thing, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's really symbolic of the resurrection of this franchise right so back on um sacramento day which was 916 september the 16th is when the beam was first introduced and uh the veteran vive our owner in sacramento got together with his group and came up with the idea so what it is really is it's six 1000 watt lasers that go up into the atmosphere, purple lasers. And they got permission f 
from the FAA. They had to get permission to do this. Um, and the rule is that you can turn it on anytime during the daytime, but it has to be turned off by midnight, not because Vivek doesn't play, pay the light bill at Golden One Center. It's because of some kind of federal law regulations uh, with the pilots flying through the atmosphere, whatever, but it's got to be turned off at, at midnight Pacific time every, every time they turn it on. So um, it's great. You know, like people run outside their homes in downtown and midtown after winds to go look at the beam. They stop their cars on the shoulder of Interstate 80 driving up and out of Sacramento to stare at the beam. And it's really a, a, a fantastic phenomenon. I mean, all the uh, light the beam t-shirts. When we go on the road, we played a game. Uh, it was probably the game of the year in the NBA this year during the regular season, a double overtime, 176-174 win against the Clippers. And late in the game, you could hear a smattering of Kings fans shouting, chanting, light the beam, light the beam. And at that point, it really became a thing. And, and like everywhere we went this year, you could hear that chant. And it's really become a part of our franchise's identity. And uh, it's, it's like I said, symbolic of the rebirth. And <laughs> hey, listen, when the aliens come for us, man, and they see the purple <laughs> light, because if they go further than the eye can see. That's what we're told, right? When the aliens come for us, they'll come to Sacramento, see this fun basketball team that averages 120 <laughs> And say, hey, this is cool. I think we might stay a while, you know. I used to think it was kind of cool that the Cubs would raise the W flag, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. so but, but part of the magic of this is the fact that they're beating the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a yeah. hundred miles, right? It's a hundred miles. Yeah. Let me let me jump in on this, and I watched a lot of pundits and people that sit in our chairs saying, well, nice regular season, but they're going to get up against the champs. And even though the champs are a six seed, like a lot of people pick Golden State in six, Golden State in five. I saw a couple of Golden State in seven. Not many people pick Sacramento. And, I, and Mark and I, and John, something you and I have talked about too. The way the NBA rules have changed, and I wouldn't say – they don't care about defense, but it's been devalued. Like from back in our day in the 80s, all of us watching those, you know, the Lakers and Celtics and the Pistons and the bad boys and how tough and rumble, rough and tumble it was. They don't do that anymore. They don't let you do that. And when it becomes a your turn, my turn, let's run up and down and score. And Golden State kind of made it that way. They've run into their, it, it's kind of like, Tiger teaching all those kids to play golf. Now he can't beat them, right? Like it, it, it's Golden State brought that in and everybody's doing it now. And you might have a team here that's better than them at doing that. Just scoring. Yeah. Great analogy. I mean, Sacramento's got the fastest guard baseline to baseline in the NBA and De'Aaron Fox. He's been unlocked by Mike Brown, who came in and has this offense designed to really embellish his strengths the same a golden goes. state offense yeah. yeah golden state had an offense he started he implemented it back in the nba summer league back in july and man it's not unusual to see us put up you know 70 points 75 points and a half some games and it's just supercharged and you know although sacramento is ranked 25th in defensive rating near the bottom there's so much pressure on other teams to keep up from a scoring standpoint if you don't score 118 points a game, you're probably going to lose against Sacramento. So that's the catch. 